In the next activity, Media Right or Media Wrong, use this flipbook and the bag of rocks to show your visitors how to become meteorite detectives. Spread out the meteorites and rocks at the bottom of the bag in the area labeled, not sure about these rocks. We will go through a series of tests to determine which of these rocks may be meteorites. As the presenter, you have images to show an audience and notes for yourself on the flip side of the book. It's nearly impossible to come up with universal meteorite characteristics. So here, it's important to note that we're discussing two common types of meteorites, stony chondrites and irons. These two types make up over 90% of the meteorites found on Earth. You'll notice that all the rocks but one have numbers on them. There's a key on page 13 of the flipbook, and we've also included a key inside the bag. To get ready for the activity, I remove the magnet, and the sliced stony meteorite. That's that very thin piece that doesn't have a number on it. Leave the rest of the rocks on the bottom of the bag. Get out your bag of rocks and follow along. It's easy to gather a crowd with an opening line like, hey, I've got some cool rocks here. Some are from outer space. Can you figure out which ones? Let's become meteorite detectives. We're gonna find out all about meteorites and eliminate the rocks here that don't look like meteorites. Start off, to make it through our atmosphere and all the way to the ground, a space rock has to be strong and solid. If they're not strong, they'll vaporize in our atmosphere, leaving a streak of light. So any of these rocks here that are porous or full of holes like a sponge, they're probably earth rocks, not meteorites. You can put those specimens here, in the earth rocks category. Great. Our atmosphere also heats up the outside layer of an incoming space rock until it melts. This gives many of the meteorites a dark crust, like in this picture. Other types of meteorites might look like a dark splash of metal instead. Either way, light-colored rocks probably are not meteorites unless you see a thin, dark, melted crust on them somewhere. Put all light-colored rocks in the earth box. Great. So now we're down to non-porous, dark rocks. Almost all meteorites found on Earth are originally pieces of the asteroid belt. While the Earth and asteroids are made of the same original materials, an important difference between asteroids and planets is that most asteroids never got very big. Let me explain. A few asteroids did get big enough and hot enough to have the iron liquefy and sink to the center, creating a core just like the rocky planets. After big collisions between asteroids, pieces of that core can land here on Earth. Those pieces we call iron meteorites but most of the asteroids never got big enough or hot enough for the iron to sink to the core, like on Earth. In most asteroids, there's iron all mixed in within the rock and dust. We call these stony meteorites. But whether they're pieces of small asteroids or the cores of larger asteroids, almost all of the meteorites have a good amount of iron in them. And iron is heavy. So a meteorite should be heavier than an average earth rock of the same size. Pick up the rocks we're still not sure about. Let's put any lightweight rocks into the earth box. Very good. Rocks with iron in them should also stick to a strong magnet. I just happen to have this one here. Iron meteorites from the cores of asteroid are the easiest kind to detect. They have a lot of metal in them, so they stick very easily to a magnet. Stony meteorites are a mixture of metal and stone, and you have to watch very carefully for these. Try dragging the magnet slowly across the surface of these rocks. See if any stick even just a little bit. Anything that doesn't stick to a magnet, at least a little bit, is probably not a meteorite. Great. Let's check out what you found. Now this is an iron meteorite. Good job. And hey, you even found the stony meteorite. Only the most careful meteorite detectives will find this one. But it's not always that simple. A few types of earth rocks also have iron in them. 
For example, this rock is lodestone, an earth rock with lots of iron in it that's often mistaken for a meteorite. It's hard to tell the difference between this earth rock and a meteorite without further testing. It's explained more in the flipbook. In fact, a lot of earth materials can be mistaken for meteorites, like pieces of metal from a workshop. I have another specimen of that stony meteorite. This one's been sliced open so you can see the inside. With this magnifying glass, you can see the metal flakes and the pieces of rock right next to each other. Congratulations, you're now holding pieces of rock from the asteroid belt. Now there's one other rock here that's not originally from outer space, but it has been outside the Earth's atmosphere. This is called a tektite. It was created when a huge space rock crashed into Earth, releasing so much energy that the rock and sand around it were melted instantly. That liquid rock was flung far from the site and up above the atmosphere. As it cooled, it became glassy, like this. So it was created from space rock impact, even if it isn't from the asteroid belt. The rest of the flipbook has more information on meteorites, as well as an explanation of the tektite included here. The two meteorites in the initial pile and the tektite are marked 2, 4, and 6. That's an easy way to remember what you're looking for. Some of the clubs that tested this activity said that once they got comfortable, they didn't even use the flipbook. The rocks created enough interest on their own.